He was one of the most notable figures in the Philadelphia crime family as an associate. He was working up the ranks in the crime family ladder. He would be friends with one, killed with one, and unfortunately, died by one. This is the story of Vincent Falcone. The Beginning Vincent Falcone was born on November 8, 1949. There is not much documents nor public record about Falcone's life. However, we will use some sources from Philadelphia journalist George Anastasia and from Philip Leonetti, who was Vincent Falcone's one-time right-hand man and his assassin, from his book Mafia Prince. Vincent Falcone was reported to be born in Argentina in Latin America, and his parents were of Italian descent. As he grown from a boy to a man, Vincent Falcone and his family moved to the United States to live the American dream. However, everybody's vision of the American dream is very different. Vincent Falcone was close with his mother, Rosaria Falcone, but we have no reports about the relationship of his father. Vincent Falcone was built between 5 foot 8 inches to 9 inches. He had dark brown hair and a thick dark brown mustache. However, he had a receding hairline that was the shape of a horseshoe. He was young in his late 20s to find a decent profession after he was married to a woman. Vincent Falcone, his mother and wife would later settle by moving into the neighborhoods of New Jersey to see many Italian families begin an honest living such as being chefs, fishermen, businessmen, and more. On the contrary, he will also be around people who stole, robbed, and kill as well for a living. One mobster that would change Vincent Falcone's life would be seen in the neighborhood often. That mobster was Nicodemo, Little Nicky Scarfo. Vincent Falcone will also be a businessman in his own right and worked as a cement contractor. However, when him and Nicky Scarfo had did business, Scarfo had more interest than just cement. The Hit Cement contractor Vincent Falcone thought he was in a good position to cash in on the casino gambling boom that occurred in the late 1970s that was sweeping across Atlantic City several decades ago. Falcone saw construction all over the city and figured he'd be able to get a piece of the action. However, while he was sharing drinks with some friends at an apartment on Dickiter Street in Margate, New Jersey, until one fatal night. The Hitman Here we will quote from Philip Leonetti's Mafia Prince. The two local cement contractors named Alfredo Ferraro and Vincent Falcone who had befriended both Scarfo and Leonetti who were constantly in their presence and a busy savvy street smart Jewish gangster named Saul Kane who had relocated to the Jersey Shore from North Philly, rounded out the core of Nicky Scarfo's Atlantic City crew in the mid-1970s. I used to hang around a lot with Vincent Falcone, me and Lawrence, referring to Lawrence Merlino. He was with me the night at the sandbar and I had problems with his motorcycle guys. Vince was a few years older than me and he was married, but he used to go out and drink several nights a week. He always had a lot to say, he was very opinionated, and had a big of an ego. Vince was always complaining about money, who he owed, who owed him, how much he was making, how much other guys were making, and just constantly complain. My uncle liked him, but he would always say, he's not Costa Nostra, meaning he didn't have the right mindset or attitude, referring to the Mafia in Philadelphia. Well, referring to the Mafia in the United States. 
Alfredo was a bit older and he and Vince were very close. Their families had come to the United States together from Argentina. They were both Italian, but they were from Argentina. My uncle, he said things like, these two guys, they're not like us, meaning they didn't think like us. Both Alfredo and Vince were cement contractors and Alfredo had taught me the ins and outs of, of the concrete business. Now Saul Cain was a character. He loved Meyer Lansky and he was Jewish, so we called him Meyer. Years later, my uncle arranged for Saul to meet Meyer Lansky down in Florida. It was like a Catholic priest meeting the Pope. Saul was in heaven. Saul was a great guy and a lot of fun to be with. He owned a bar in Atlantic City, my way lounge, and he worked as a bail bondsman. He used to hang out a lot with me and Lawrence, either at my way or Teddy's worst end lounge on Trenton Avenue. My uncle loved Saul and he would like to do business with Bobby Mann, tapped his index finger to his head, meaning Saul was smart, but he say he can never get this, and he rubbed his thumb and index finger together, meaning his button, because he was Jewish and not Italian. In this thing, the kosher notion you had to be 100% Italian to be made, and that was one of the rules. We could do business with Saul, and he could do business with us, but he can never get straightened out and become a full-fledged member. As Scarfo continued to build his mob crew, Atlantic City, the down-and-out seaside resort which Scarfo controlled, was about to be brought back to life with legalized casino gambling coming to a town a way to stimulate the once thriving resort. Overnight, both Scarfo's and Atlantic City's futures began to look much brighter. The First Hit Lawrence Marlino was a great guy, and like his brother Chucky, he was very loyal to my uncle. He and I were very closer in age, so we spent a lot of time together. One time I was at a bar in Atlantic City with Vince Falcone and a few girls, and I got into a fight with some kid who was involved in the local motorcycle gang. This kid, Louis DeMarco, was robbing Chicky Narducci's crap games in Philadelphia. Chicky Narducci was one of Angelo Bruno's top guys. Angelo Bruno, who was the godfather of Philadelphia at this time, just for full disclosure. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.